Amendment number one to extend contract 22-11 from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 with CityNet for homeless outreach services in the amount of $321,036.28. Presentation by Tony Luce, our police captain. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and members of council. Uh, I'm bringing before you a request to extend the city's contract with CityNet. Our partnership with CityNet began in March of 2022. Uh, that contract was set for 16 months and is set to expire at the end of June. Um, so we are seeking to extend that contract for another 12 months. Uh, last year when the police department researched potential vendors uh, for street outreach and engagement, ser engagement services, uh, police, the police chief looked at the needs of our city. Several of these needs included non-law enforcement street outreach and engagement, regular follow-up and case management services, connections to emergency housing, medical care and food, transportation to services and other factors. Uh, CityNet was the only organization we found that was able to singularly provide all of these services and potentially meet the needs of our city. And now that we have worked with them for approximately 16 months, we have found that they have provided valuable services to, for us that the city department simply cannot provide um, alone. Since our partnership with CityNet, CityNet has found housing for 48 people. They have encountered over 300 uh, people experiencing homelessness. Um, they have engaged in almost 1,000 contacts, meaning that several homeless individuals have been contacted numerous times. Um, this is often necessary to build rapport and trust with them in order to get them to um, want to accept services um, that they desperately need. Um, from a fiscal standpoint, the 12-month uh, contract would cost $321,000 uh, excuse me, $321,036.28. Um, in, two, in 2022, I applied for the permanent uh, local housing allocation grant through the California Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, the PLHA uh, program was established through Senate Bill 2, uh, and the money can only be used for very specific eligible activities, uh, including assisting persons with, uh, the, who are experiencing homelessness. Um, we were eligible for monies available in 2020 and 2021 in the total amount of $369,374. Um, that money has all been received and is being used to pay for the 2022-2023 uh, CityNet contract. In November, we were awarded an additional $247,348 um, for monies that were available in 2022. That money will be used to pay for the remainder of the 22-23 contract, and the balance will be used towards the 2023-24 contract. Um, there are two additional years of proposed PLHA funding, um, but those amounts will not be known until uh, 2024 and 2025. Um, so at this point, um, I am pleased to introduce CityNet Regional uh, Program Supervisor Valerie Carter uh, to talk about their organization. Thank you. Good evening, council members. Um, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, we have had a team of two case managers, two full-time case managers here in the city since March of 2022. Um, so when my team, and I have the privilege of supervising the team of two, uh, but when they are in your city, they roll around in a city net branded uh, marked minivan so that neighbors, residents, um, business owners will be able to very easily recognize them. Um, but we operate um, not only on an appointment system, when we get calls to our outreach line, we're able to go out the very next day and um, meet the individual wherever they're at, um, as well as we work directly with the CROs. Um, so we have a really great relationship with them, and uh, they will let us know when they encounter someone that they believe needs our help, and we will be there as soon as we are done with our current appointment or as soon as we're able to get there. Um, we, as a team, refer and participate in um, the Office of Care Coordination's Coordinated Entry System. So this is a homeless service system that is designed to connect those that are sleeping outside or in places not meant for habitation to um, not only emergency shelter beds, but also permanent housing opportunities. So those are things such as permanent supportive housing, uh, rapid rehousing programs, as well as uh, housing voucher programs. Uh, throughout the pandemic, there's been an increase of emergency housing vouchers, and those are the um, types of things that we seek to get individuals sleeping outside or in their cars connected to as soon as possible. But we um, are really proud of the work that we've been able to do here in Fountain Valley in the last 
14 months, I think you said, 16 months. Um, but we have cleared several encampments behind the softball fields. Um, there have been some pretty highly visible encampments on some major cross streets that we've been able to um, help mitigate along with uh, PD. So we're really proud of that as well. But we're continuing to charge on, plug on, um, and hopefully increase the number of emergency shelter um, and permanent housing placements in your city. I'm available for any questions. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Sure. So I have, a, I have a question. So if I understood correctly on the first contract, I believe it was approximately 400000 Is that right? It was three hundred ninety-five and some change. Approximately yeah. four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and in that 400000 it was included that it was for expenses, such as somebody needed a bus ride back to Kansas City to get back to their family or, or stuff like that. Um, and... It was a not to exceed contract, if I remember correctly, and that if not all of the expenditures were spent for that, that you wouldn't use them all. So I guess, first off, do I have that correct? And two, did you spend it all? Uh, I'm not, I don't regard, remember the, the wording on that of, of whether they're uh, all that, we, we, we paid it out in monthly installments. I forget what the, the monthly payment was. I don't remember any of the wording from the original contract that it was uh, whether it was a not to exceed contract and whether there was any stipulations regarding monies that weren't spent. Okay. I, does anybody know? I don't recall that it was a not to exceed. Well, I know that it was like if somebody needed a plane ride home or something, there was that was built into it. And I remember asking at the time, well, if we don't, if we don't spend that portion of it, because not all of it was for that, but if we didn't spend all of that, what happens to that funding? I guess, I mean, I don't need an answer right now, but I, I would like an answer on that. Sure, I can look into that for you. Yeah. And thank you, sir. Oh, Maggie, do you know? Um, Mayor Pro Tem, I, I recall there was an allotment, uh, possibly up to 50000 for um, the flexibility of uh, CityNet to tap into for motel stay or hotel right. stay or potentially some transportation voucher to allow the individual to go to their loved ones or something to that respect. But we'll give you a firm answer. Okay. That. All right. I just want to make sure we're, we're watching closely. That's all. I'm sure somebody is. I'm confident of that. Yeah, looking, looking at the, uh, the current contract, um, I'm, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're talking about. There's a client services uh, total, which is itemized at $44,000, which includes several things, including rapid rehousing, room and board rooms, relocations, also fees for documentation, local transportation, work expenses. Um, I don't know if that would be inclusive of what you're talking about from the previous contract, but I will definitely look into that and I can get you an answer on that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Either way, I, I, I don't want to sound negative because you guys are doing a fantastic job on this and uh, I appreciate it. And you know, it's it's not perfect. We still have unhoused in our community. Obviously, that those that just absolutely refuse any kind of help. But I honestly think, with you know, we had upwards of twenty something in in our sports park at unhoused people at the time, and I feel good that we were able to provide help for that and resources. And it's not perfect, but uh, I think we would be in a much uh, different situation, not as favorable without CityNet. So thank you for all you do. Anyone else? Sure. My question. Um, so f just in general, when you go out to um, uh, make contact with um, with the with the homeless person, what um, uh, what are some of the things? I mean, we hear a lot of stuff on the news. It's you know, it's drugs. It's um, can't afford housing. They um, don't want help. Um, what 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 are some of the things you're seeing out there? Sure, I think the things that you just mentioned are things that we often encounter. We do uh, work with individuals, regardless of their current sobriety, um, in pursuing any housing resources or any other uh, potential treatment resources, relocations, reconnecting with family or friends. Um, but um, in regards to substance abuse, fentanyl is the drug that we are seeing most often out being utilized out on the streets. Um, and it is an awful drug that takes a hold of people very, very quickly. So um, 
the ramifications of using that um, are usually pretty obvious and, and super visible to our team. But regardless of that, that doesn't mean that they are unable to be housed. It just means that it's going to be more difficult for them to um, pursue the paperwork that it takes and the meetings that it takes um, and understanding the system of care because that can oftentimes be very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, affordability in Orange County, affordability across California is a major barrier as well. It's very difficult to find rental um, amounts that are within low-income individuals' budgets, and that's just a reality of, of where we are right now. Uh, but that is why programs like rapid rehousing and permanent supportive housing and housing vouchers are vital in helping end homelessness. And that's what CityNet as an agency works towards. Uh, but we know that that takes a long time for a lot of people, so we are out here doing as much as we can, um, but utilizing the systems that are in place uh, within our county and through the Office of Care Coordination to connect to appropriate resources. Are they, are, do you get a... Are you having much success with family reunification? I, I imagine that, um, you know, if, if a family member knows that one of their family is, is homeless somewhere, they would, they would want to help. Yeah, uh, that is one of the things that we bring up uh, pretty often, having conversation about um, whether it's family or friends that they have in other areas that have adequate housing that um, would agree to accept them for an extended period of time. So when we have those conversations, we're asking, can we speak to the individual in the next state or across the country? Um, and we're asking for their address. We're doing our due diligence and making sure it's um, not a storage unit that they're going to or something like that. Um, but I wouldn't say that it comes up all too often. It's not the majority of the placements that we oh. have. Um, but, I, you know, to put a number on it, I was trying to pull it up on my phone. Um, I don't know the exact number, but I would estimate that it's probably been less than 10 since the time that we've been here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Sure, Maggie. Um, I just want the community to be aware uh, this is something that um, PD and also the support of um, our city council in response to all the un unhoused individual in our community, uh, we did see a huge influx um, in the last two years and mostly around the pandemic period. And with the support of city council, this is a tool for us to utilize in the short term. And um, as everyone knows, city council also is investing in the long term, which is a future navigation center to allow the city to enforce. Right now we have restriction what we can do um, when we see unhoused individual in the community and by our elected official investing in short term and long term, it really helps our police officer to focus on the more necessary service and focus um, from a response standpoint than, you know, working on the outreach component of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you very much, Captain Luce. And I appreciated, too, your presentation this morning at the Rotary meeting. Thank you. Thank you.